What's the best possible future you can imagine? Even though your answer will depend on your personal preferences and your ethics, I would guess that it would look something like a world where everyone is free to make their own choices and they're experiencing a lot of happiness and little or no suffering. It's a utopia. Perhaps you thought about this utopia being planet-wide, but imagine this being realized across the galaxy. 100 billion stars, each surrounded by beings living out blissfully happy lives, living on planets, moons, asteroids, or in space habitats. But let's think bigger than our galaxy. There are 4 times 10 to the power of 20 stars that could theoretically be reached by self-replicating uncrewed spacecraft known as von Neumann probes, sent from Earth before they are lost to us over the cosmological horizon due to the expansion of the universe. If we were able to surround a star with solar panels, perhaps like a Dyson sphere, and computers running copies of blissfully happy, human equivalent minds, around 10 to the power of 25 lives could be supported per star. With a few more assumptions that are linked in the description below if you're interested, this would mean that we could create 10 to the power of 54 quality adjusted life years over the life of the universe. That's an unimaginably big number. Our understanding of how big that is starts to break down. I could say that that's roughly the number of atoms in our solar system, but even that might not truly give you the sense of scale. This is our cosmic endowment, which Swedish philosopher Nick Bostrom writes about in his essay Astronomical Waste. Perhaps we should hurry up and get to this future, because each day that we delay our cosmic endowment means an unimaginable amount of unrealized happiness as the stars burn out and we waste their energy. Or, as I'll get to later, perhaps we should focus on trying to make sure this future happens at all by reducing the risk of human extinction. This is a truly lovely future, but unfortunately it's also one that I'm not very confident will be realized, as much as I wish I were. There are a lot of ways that the future could go wrong. Imagine trillions upon trillions of digital minds, each being forced to work, with suffering as a threat. Now imagine every piece of matter in our galaxy being dedicated to this goal. This would turn our supposed cosmic endowment into a cosmic debt. A cosmic dystopia. If humanity is not snuffed out on Earth by some cataclysmic event like artificial intelligence, asteroid impacts, supervolcanoes, nuclear war, or engineered pandemics, our future will probably end up between one of these two extremes. And maybe, even if we do go extinct, this future would still occur. Who's to say that intelligent life won't arise here on Earth again, or an alien species somewhere else in the universe won't pick up the mantle? There are a lot of reasons to think that things might go poorly in the future, and we only have to look at our past to see how good we are at exploiting others for gain, whether that's humans or non-humans. But maybe the future will be better. It does feel like we've had substantial moral progress throughout the last few hundred years of human history. As Steven Pinker argues in his books, Better Angels of Our Nature and Enlightenment Now. If we think about the moral circle of humanity, it does seem like it's growing over time to include more and more beings. These are some of the areas that people argue we've made moral progress in in the last few hundred years. More on the moral circle in my last video. But maybe that moral progress won't continue, or maybe we won't be in control, like if the future is just full of sentient AI exploiting other sentient AI. In some ways, things are actually getting worse with time over the last few hundred years. Just look at this graph of the number of land animals slaughtered for meat per year from 1961 to 2022. I'm sure those animals would disagree on how much moral progress we've had if they could. But arguably, that's not necessarily because our moral attitude towards animals is going backwards so much as it is a byproduct of economic development. Because as people get richer, they can afford to eat more meat. In my last video, I talked about artificial sentience, which is AI or other artificial entities that can think and feel. I also talked about some of the ways that things can go badly for artificial sentience in the future. For example, they'd probably be highly efficient at mental labor, so we'd probably find a way to exploit them for that work, maybe by deleting them or resetting their memory when they start to complain about the lack of breaks, so we can just keep them working forever. Now imagine these digital minds across the universe suffering intensely. Determining whether the future will be positive is a deep and tricky topic, and I've really only scratched the surface here. If you want to read more, J.C. Rhesanthus outlines some of the cases for and against thinking the future will go well in this blog post. Full disclosure, I gave a small amount of feedback on this piece, and I worked at Sentience Institute where this is published until a few months ago. I mentioned earlier that it's hard to think about big numbers, but it's also hard to think about what the peak of experience might feel like. We tend to lack imagination. As Joe Carlsmith said in this blog post, concrete utopias are unrealistically small, familiar, and comprehensible. But that goes both ways. The worst possible suffering has probably not been imagined by even the most creative science fiction writers. Bostrom's Letter from Utopia is often praised as one of the better examples of what a utopia might look like, but even that surely doesn't even approach the actual peak. 
because it can't. For the same reason that our great ape ancestors would have thought that one of the best parts about becoming human would have been they get to eat bananas all the time. They've missed a few key elements of what it's like to be a human. On the other end, I'm not really sure of anything that could be considered a letter from dystopia, but the digital hell in Ian Banks' surface detail seemed terrifying enough to me. Before I continue, please make sure to like this video and comment if you're learning, and subscribe if you want to see more. It really helps me out. If the wheels of galactic colonization are ever set in motion, it seems unlikely that they would ever stop. After all, how could you ever catch a probe traveling at near light speed by traveling at roughly the same speed? Once interstellar colonization begins, it would probably continue forever in an expanding bubble. This is a type of lock-in event, because we would be locked in to the future that this creates once it starts. So if we're going to be locked in, we'd first want to make sure that this future would be good rather than bad. From a classical hedonic utilitarian perspective, I guess this just means would the future contain more pleasure or suffering on balance. Suppose that we're only 50% sure that this future will be good. Maybe we'd want to delay expansion until we're more certain. But even if we're 51% sure, given how big the stakes are, maybe we'd want to keep delaying until we're 99% sure. This might mean delaying our cosmic endowment, but what's a few hundred years of us spending time carefully thinking about whether this future will be good compared to billions upon billions of years of universal cosmic suffering? Now, the counter to this might be, well, we need to hurry up and expand and spread off this planet, because the longer we delay, the more likely it is that we'll experience some extinction event and be locked in anyway. So now we're faced with a choice between two different lock-ins. So on the one side, we're locked into an unknown future, and on the other, we're locked into no future. I guess the lock-in that you choose will depend on whether you're more or less sure the 50% that the future will be good. So practically speaking, what does this mean? How does this probability affect what you do? Well, if you're more sure than not that the future will be bad, whatever that means to you, maybe you'd want to focus your time and money on making sure that the future is good rather than trying to make sure there is a future by reducing extinction risk. Maybe by expanding our moral circle, spreading good values, and trying to end the moral atrocities that exist today to make sure that they're not around in the future. There are some important considerations that I haven't really touched on here, like what if we spread animal farming or wild animal suffering to other planets? What if we terraform other planets? Maybe I'll cover those another time. Nick Bostrom wrote Deep Utopia, Life and Meaning in a Solved World, which was released in March 2024, which focuses on what might happen if AI development goes right. I haven't read this one yet, but that may be another topic for a future video. I've linked to Bostrom's interview with Lib Bowery about the book in the description. Thank you for watching this far, and I'd like to know what do you think about all this? Is the future more likely to be good or bad? Let's keep the conversation going in the comments, and please subscribe and stick around if you want to see more videos on space, science, and ethics. If you'd like to support me to make more videos like this, rather than looking for gainful employment, you can make a contribution to my Buy Me A Coffee page, which is linked in the description. That's it. Bye.